Hey YouTube, just wanted to come back with another design vlog kind of a video. So last night, quite late in the night, I'm browsing YouTube, I'm watching videos, and I come across um, a top 10. The guy's like, this is my top 10 favorite board games of all time. I'm like, okay, surely there's something that, something in there that's a gem, you know. And I'm watching through, and each, each um game listed basically goes this is what the game is this is the theme this is what i like about it this is like a really brief overview of how to play right um and the game letters from Whitechapel show up and he goes to the brief overview of the game and he's like it's a hidden movement game you need to write down the square that your person has moved to and i was like this big light bulb moment you know i wanted to make something using this mechanic because i hadn't really seen it in action like that before so i was like i'm sold i want to try and do this right away and what i wanted to really show off today is how the game crafter website works and the way that i design games using the game crafter so i i initially went in and wrote kind of like a, like a really generic brief of all the different things that i wanted in the game i knew that because so i was basically using the existing letters from white chapel like the main components right so there's a board that has different spaces on it that are numbered in some way there's um character pieces that represent the pe people are chasing around um and then there's like the the um pad where you're writing on where where you're going to be like that's the minimum right um there's also stuff like fluorescent uh transparent discs that you use to be like hey i've looked at this spot and gave me info um and stuff like that. And I, I kind of took that basis and I let it evolve from there. And now we switch over to, this is what the back end kind of looks like um, for all the components that are listed in the game, right? And basically what I did was I go, okay, I need a board. I didn't start with the board. I started with the cards. I always start with the cards. I, I, okay, okay, I needed a deck of cards because what I wanted to happen was rather than the the hidden movement player just choosing wherever they wanted to go and it being a certain number of spaces or whatever i wanted them to have like a trail it was like a really loose way of them being told kind of what kind of compass direction they needed to move in but that was um left out for the other players to see so the starting point they don't know about but if they found you somewhere along the way and they could figure out which of the cards that, that was, then you had like sort of a trail on where that could be, right? So we'll open up the cards. And <clears throat> so this is what it looks like, right? This is the the, the back of just, and for this, I because this is just going to be a prototype where I'm just testing out the game. I don't know if this is going to go anywhere. I just made stuff. I put text on it. I used stock art, right? And I built it however I could. Um, so like you, you load the back and then you put in the front of each card, right? And so this is what the, the line template looks like. You don't actually see it like this, but the, if I can, yes. Um, if you come up here about templates, it has basically that in a, a more readable way. And basically what I'll do is for each different component, I'll open it up in Photoshop and it will give you the exact outline. And I will turn that outline into a transparent layer and then build everything underneath that so that I make sure everything is in the right spot. Now, that's the like making the game for manufacturer step that usually happens like much later on, right? But when when you're, you know what the component is and you're building it, doing the art yourself for the prototype directly into what it's supposed to be, I found that it makes it so much easier and you're skipping like the scribbly shitty step beforehand, um, which I thought was really helpful. So now like whenever I'm making a card game, I'm like literally open up Photoshop. I literally go 825 by 1125. And like that's instantly the dimensions of the TGC poker card like template. It's got a 75 pixel bleed on every side, which is like literally what this what this is. That's the 75 pixel bleed. That's the blue line, right? <clears throat> and I literally designed it to have that it's just empty space. Like I know half of that's going to get cut off and then this makes a border. And so you can put a black line right on there, but it, it drifts and it doesn't look great. It doesn't come out as clean and stuff like magic cards do. So having the like extended border kind of look is great. Right. And so like, this is just a piece of art that I made using stock, um, stock art and stuff that I put onto it. The background is literally uh, a layer of parchment 
at the bottom, so down here, a layer of parchment at the bottom. Um, the cityscape, a transparent layer of parchment, and then a solid layer of parchment where I've erased that kind of pattern through it, right? Um, and I was just like, look, that's enough. It just has to look like something that's not a scribbly mess, you know? And then I kind of put all the information on it that I wanted. And so, like, this this main yellow part is the icon palette move. You're moving one space, right? And then there's other ones that are, like, um, two spaces or an elbow shape, you know? Um, and so this this was kind of the... This is what I thought the Yoink and Twist was going to be. I thought it was going to be, like, this is Letters from White Chapel, but there's a trail that you follow, right? And the cards dictates a certain amount of how the person moves. So then I, I finish the cards, right? And I upload all the cards. And I go, okay, I need um, dudes on the map, basically. I need, I need to find the, the meeples or whatever I want to use. And so TGC actually has, like, a whole bunch of stock of different stuff. Uh, if you use add stock component, you can go through and find all the different wooden pieces and stuff like that. And I changed, I'm pretty sure letters from my chapel, the story is like um, a police chasing a murderer, right? And I twisted that to kind of fit the theme that I have for the calling, which is the cultist trying to summon uh, like an, an elder deity similar to Cthulhu. Um, and the investigators of the precinct are trying to like find them, which is like we're pretty similar already, right? But the, the cultist who's moving around is hidden and so doesn't have a piece. And then the gangsters, <laughs> I saw the outline of that and I was like, oh, that, that's actually kind of not that far off the kind of vibe that I want for my investigators. Um, you know, the big coat, right? The hat is probably not that off. Um, and then I was like, okay, well, then I need something that when the cultist actually summons the the bad guy, right? And there's this dragon. I was like, oh, yeah, it's probably good enough. Um, this is actually supposed to be fine. Um, and then I have these cubes. So the investigators can put down beacons, and that means that the, the cultists can't travel past that, that spot, right? It makes like a roadblock, and they can use that to kind of pinch them into a corner somewhere if they have an idea where they are. Um, 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 and then... Yeah, so then I have the map and I have the score pad. So the in in the movement part, the the cultist, the bad guy, is just writing down a number for the location that they're in. And so a score pad is that's basically what that is, right? You for this game, oh, right? Then you're peeling it off, and you're making a new one. And the like, I literally do the same thing. I'm uh, opening up the template, right? And the template tells me it's exactly this big, and the top side is where the glue is for the thing. So you're like, okay, I align it so that it's from left to right. This is the top part, you know. I did the same background art style, and then I just put in like a generic back. Um, and then the map, I'm like, well, the map isn't how big I need it to be. The map is how big the component can be made. And this is something that I've learned working with other projects. For example, Spaceship Readout. Initially, we had like a little plastic ship and and crystals. They're like aquarium gravel crystals. And because that, that was just what was in the store. That was what was, what was available, right? Um, and when, when we went to the manufacturer, we were like, what what does punch card look like instead? And they're like, punch card's super easy. I'm like, oh, shit, okay. Um, and because then we could use the custom art for the punch card, we made the game look a lot less uh, generic. A lot less generic in that way. So we were able to choose exactly how we wanted how we wanted it to be. And the, a lot of the game craft works in the same way, where you can go, okay, I have the default stuff that I can use, and if I'm just building a prototype, it's not a big deal. Or I can find an equivalent where I can make the exact art for the thing that I want, right? And the board is a really good example for this because you have a whole bunch of different boards to choose from, but the boards are kind of the fixed size that the manufacturer has. If you if I go to a random Chinese manufacturer and I go, I need a board that is exactly this size, they go, yeah, we'll cut one for you, that's fine, right? Um, and so in this way, I am making the art for the template rather than the art for whatever the hell exactly the game is. Because I don't know exactly what the game is. This is the prototype. I have never played this game before. I don't know if I need to make this bigger or smaller, or if this is terrible and I should throw away the whole thing. But 
that's kind of the idea behind it, right? I'm I'm building something that rather than having a prototype of scissors and glue and pieces of cardboard that I put together, I'm building something that allows me to go along the steps of the manufacturer and see exactly what goes into building what what like the exact components I need to build a thing. Like imagine you're a carpenter building a table and you're picking out the pieces of wood that you need to like, you know, put the legs together and all that kind of stuff to build a table. You already know what comprises a table and what the finished product is kind of going to look like, right? And sometimes with this, you don't know, or sometimes with this, a lot of different things can, can fill that same slot. Like the gangsters that I picked out could just be regular meeples, right? It could just be regular meeples, or I could get something custom cut and that would cost extra, or I could get uh, punch cards, or I could get all these other things. And what it then becomes is rather than um, building a, a prototype in able to like just specifically play the thing, then you're going and building exactly what you need for the game. And what, what the game says is going to be best for the game. But I, you're not going to know what that is until you've built a half decent prototype and actually played it. And a lot of people are averse to playing a prototype that looks crap. Because they they want to be sold on whatever the final thing is. So if you pull out if you pull out a prototype that looks good, and the game crafter is a great way to do that, and a lot of my prototypes come through the game crafter. Uh, if you pull out something that looks good and looks almost finished, right? Then when they play it, they go, oh, you know, cool. This is I feel I feel like I can see the direction in which this is coming. The player doesn't have to sit there and imagine half of what what the game is going to be, right? You, you've you already created half of an immersive experience. And a lot of that comes down to what your game is, you know? There's a lot of cerebral games that could be played with zero components. Like, Blood on the Clock Tower is, like, this huge in, invested game that has thousands of production value in it and all these tokens and stuff like that. But all those things do is help you remember stuff. It doesn't actually, like... Like, you could play it without that. I, I've just played it with like notes on my phone before um, running a game. And I feel like a lot of other games are similar in that. And then you get to choose exactly what what range of things are essential and what range of stuff is for the player to remember and how much you can help the player out with those things and what, you know, what part of the game is this and that and whatever. And you get to build something that matches your price, the price tag for your game. Like if your game is a small game in, in experience, you know, but then you've added all these extra things that is now is expensive, but doesn't have the perceived value of a big game, right? Then you have a problem. It's the same kind of thing. You need to be able to find a way to balance that. And I believe the Graham Craft is a fantastic tool for that. You see what everything costs as you add it to the game. You see exactly what a lot of your options are when it comes to building something like that. And you can literally design a game directly into... <laughs> directly into it now you can use component studio and it has been recommended to me but i haven't i don't like photoshop too much i'm too used to it i know it's slow i literally do like each card like if i'm making a 400 card game i'm making 400 cards individually um which is fine that's just my preference um but like when when i'm already i'm literally already putting the exact template dimensions and stuff and building it directly into the game crafter and looking at how it all comes together. And I, I truly believe that this is an important tool that people should be using. This, this should probably be the first port of call for every game, every game project. Um, even if it's you like buy 60% of the components and then you're like, oh, but I needed this, this really specific custom thing that you make yourself to match with everything. Like that's also still great, you know, but you can put whatever your stock art is, whatever your, your crappy first attempt at what everything will look like directly into the game. And then you can see exactly what it will look like and you'll go, oh, actually this art needs to be changed in this way. Or the pattern for my map, I literally didn't come into this with a plan. So I can open that. I literally didn't come into this with a plan. This is completely random. And if you have a look at it, all the numbering makes no sense. The one to 11, and 40 to 50 are on the outside edges because like there's a mechanical reason for them to be there. But every single other number just kind of shows up in a pocket. And like, just like a random cut, like you got 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, like, like this, 
U shape, you know, and then like 50 to 53 comes along here and stuff like that. Like it's just, it, it doesn't matter in the prototype because you just need to be able to play the game. And once you play the game and players are like, this is dumb, I don't understand this. I'm like, yeah, but that's how highways are designed. And then it's still stupid. Then I'm like, okay, well maybe I change it to be more grid-like or a more easy way to digest the way that all the numbers come together or something like that. Like there's a lot of these problems that you won't notice until you've built it and sat on the table. All right. So I don't know. I hope this, this helps you guys. A lot of um, designers do swear by the game craft. I'm one of those people. A lot of the games that I make are just a bunch of cards in the box and that's it. And so this is perfect for that. That's like the easiest thing. Just throw all the cards in there and I have actual cardboard stuff instead of people glued to a magic card as a prototype right and this is like a really great great place to start so if you are someone that is thinking about making a board game have a look browse through all the components that they've got you might go oh actually this solves a problem because they have that exact thing that i need already rather than me having to invent it already which has happened a few times for me they've had miniatures or meeples in exactly the same way that i need or they've got um spin dial counters and all this kind of stuff that i'm like wait actually that's just better than whatever i had in mind um and then put everything into a box the box shows up and then you go oh actually i need this other thing or i need to fix this or the art for this should be different or i need to actually have a thing that has art for this or whatever and i feel like it's like the fantastic best first step that you could make for your game project so i don't know hope, hope this helps you guys if you are curious about this thing or i have questions about any of the stuff covered in this video please leave a comment um it always makes me happy to see that you guys are engaging in the content and actually interested in what's going on uh, and i'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button so thanks and i'll catch you later